Hi guys, this is Mrs. Gassler and in this video we're going to talk about the types of elements that you can find on the periodic table. This is going to talk about the three main types. There are some individual groups of elements um, that are in the same column that uh, if you watch Miss Sparky or Miss Nandor's video you can better get a better idea of what those specific elements, but we're just going to talk about the three general types. You're going to need some Cornell paper and a periodic table while we watch this video, so let's go ahead and get started. So uh, make sure you put your name, date, and class period over here, and our topic is types of elements. Um, you did a lab where you looked at some types of elements and classified them based on their properties, and then we did a brief um, overview of those properties, and so now we're going to write down some definitions and understand it a little bit more fully. So we've got one question, how are metals, nonmetals, and metalloids different? And so we're going to write down um, a generic definition, and then talk about the properties, and then find them on the periodic table. Okay, so types of elements, there's three. Metals, nonmetals, and metalloids. <clears throat> now, metals are um, elements that are shiny, uh, malleable conductors. They all conduct electricity. Um, you could make a wire out of them. Uh, that's what malleable means, that you can bend it and shape it. Um, ductile makes, means you can make it into a wire. Um, and then they're generally shiny. Some of them are not as shiny as others, but they all have a little bit of luster to them. Um, Nonmetals are kind of the opposite of that. They are elements that whoops, are brittle insulators. Um, they don't conduct electricity. Um, if at all, and they are often gases or liquids. Um, all of the metals are solids, we might note that here. Uh, it, well, there's a couple of liquid metals, and you can melt the metals down, but they don't occur that way naturally, um, except for mercury. Mercury is the only one that's a liquid. Uh, metalloids are kind of interesting. They're somewhere in between a metal and a nonmetal. In fact, they're defined as a nonmetal. Uh, they're nonmetals that have some properties of metals. So when we talk about the properties, we'll talk about those. Um, and so I made a little chart here to talk about the properties, and I put metals in, or metalloids in between because they are kind of a combination of the metals and the nonmetals. So we'll be able to see that here. So the first off, the first thing we can talk about is that they are metals are malleable. Um, Nonmetals are not. Instead of bending, um, they generally break um, if they're a solid. Um, the word for that is brittle. Uh, that means that you can't bend them and shape them. They just kind of crumble in your fingers. Um, and then um, metalloids, uh, they're, they're kind of malleable sometimes um, if they're mixed with things, but they're generally brittle also. That's uh, their nonmetal nature there. Um, they are good conductors. Metals are good conductors. Nonmetals are not conductors. Um, and metalloids do conduct. So there they've got one property that matches the metals, the, the nonmetals, and one that matches the metals here. Um, so, but they, so they can conduct, uh, and that's what makes them special, those metalloids. They, uh, they have some pretty awesome uses there. Um, another one is that the metals are generally shiny and the nonmetals are generally dull. Um, that means they're, they're not shiny. Maybe they're a solid color or they look uh, kind of boring like this tabletop is not very shiny. Uh, but my pen is kind of shiny. It's not an element though, so we, we couldn't really talk about those. But the, the metalloids could be shiny or dull. Um, they, they could go either way on there. So um, the, the nice thing about the elements on the periodic table, and the periodic table just uh, has all sorts of awesome things going on with it. If you look at the periodic table, it is organized based on what kind of element it is, a metal, a nonmetal, or a metalloid. Um, and whether that happened before or after, it just, it just, it just did. So the only thing that's a little weird is that hydrogen's over here. Hydrogen is a gas, and, the, and none of the metals are gases. Um, so it's over here for another reason, which um, you'll learn about in Unit 5, but it 
um, it is a nonmetal, so it's the one that's kind of the loner over here, but then we've got the rest of the nonmetals over here. Now remember the metalloids are nonmetals also. Um, they just act like metals every now and then, so they're kind of, you see how I got the combination, the blue and the yellow make green. Oh yeah, it's awesome. Okay, and then everything else is pretty much a metal. Now these guys right here are called um, alkaline uh, metals. These are alkaline earth metals. All these guys in the middle are called transition metals or other metals. These down here are the inner transition metals. Um, and then we've got the metalloids. These guys right here are called chalcogens, just the nonmetals, chalcogens, and these are called halogens, and then these guys over here are called noble gases, um, and they're noble gases because they're very special, which I'm sure you'll learn about later. They don't, they don't participate in chemical reactions or bond with other atoms, so you'll learn about them, um, and you'll learn about why also in Unit 5, so thanks for watching.